What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Jerome. Coming to you tonight with a review for The Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is season number 11. This is episode 19, and it's titled No Money, More Problems. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So, go ahead. All right, so we start this episode. We see Nene. Nene is going over to Marlo's house, and she's on the phone with Greg. And Greg is telling Nene, you know, hey, um, try not to be over there too long because I need you. And she's like, okay, she got to do this and this and that with Marlo. I could have dealt without this scene. So, um, so we see Mar um, Nene go into Marlo's house. Marlo tells Nene that Tanya's going to come over. So, you know, then Nene and Marlo, they go have a sit on the couch. And, you know, she asked her, how was Greg doing? And, you know, she says, um, what did she say? He's making it. And I'm just like, again, Nene is so selfish. Nene makes everything about herself. Like, your husband has cancer. You're not the one with cancer. So, I, bitch, where that bug come from? Damn, I left my door open for too long. And a bug slipped in here earlier today. Fuck. Back to the video. Um... Yeah, so, you know, she's, again, making everything about herself. So then Tanya shows up, and then when Tanya shows up, this is when Marlo goes, you know, into a, she starts talking about Eva. And, you know, she's talking about how Eva's dresses were, you know, pretty, and how maybe she shouldn't have so many outfit changes because, you know, um, Eva is having some financial, situ, you know, financial troubles. And I'm just like, what the fuck, man? This girl invited you to her wedding, and here you are talking shit about her and her wedding, like... Her wedding, her finances, and then her husband's finances on top of that. Like, I just thought that was tacky as fuck. And for somebody who nobody knows what you do for a living, how you make your money, you are the last person they need to be throwing any kind of stones at anybody's glass house. Because you live in the same glass house, like I said. Nobody knows what you do. You want to talk about last season at the reunion when um, Kenya clocked you about that. Simply Marlo LLC. Girl, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is you motherfucker? You just flew right into my camera, you bitch. Sorry, y'all. Um, but yeah, talking about simply Marlo LLC. Like, girls, stop, stop with the bullshit. You're using grandpa's pension. You're using somebody's 401k. Um, somebody's you know retirement fund. You know somebody's social security. You're doing a lot of shit that you you using another man's funds. Like, get the fuck out of here. Oh God, I just got so irritated with that. So then they call one of uh, Eva's bridesmaids and, you know, she's telling them Eva's business, how the house that Eva lives in, it's not in her name. It's not in, um, you know, Mike's name. It's um, what else? Her credit score is bad. You know, the car that she has is repossessed. And then they're going to gasp. I'm like, Nene, I know good damn well you're not talking. Dude, let's not forget, was it season four of Real Housewives of Atlanta when Sheree said that your car got repoed inside outside of the Home Depot? Like, Get the fuck out of here. You should know something about repossessions. Like, really, you should. Um. Oh, yeah, and then they talk about her not wanting to know where, um, you know, she's not wanting people to know where she lives because of Kevin McCall because he's crazy. Shit. The motherfucker is crazy. Like, he disowned his own daughter. Like, Damn. So, and you know, Marlo talking about she don't believe it. I'm like, girl, have you not saw this shit with him in the, in the blogs? Like, that motherfucker is crazy. Like, yes, I do believe even when she says what she says about Kevin McCall. I definitely believe her. So, I, I can't believe Good thing she married Mike instead of Kevin McCall. She dies a big ass bullet with that one. Um, so then we see uh, another scene with Nene where she is talking to Greg. And this scene right here, this scene pissed me the fuck off. Like, I was so over Nene at this point. If I haven't been over Nene at any point in this season, tonight was it. Because she's sitting with Greg, and she's talking about how Greg has been so grouchy and he's been so mean to her. Yes, I get it. He's been mean and he's been rude. He 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 shouldn't be doing that. To, he shouldn't be doing that. But he is going through something that is new to him. He he could die number one he could die nini you know he's sick his body is going through so many different you know changes at this point the medication he's probably on is probably affecting him in a, in a in a negative way so he doesn't mean to take it out on you 
but it's just he 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 doesn't know how to deal with what he's going through and for her to sit there and just put it all on her time about you know um he's she's not able to do the same things um that she, she used to do because he was by, by her side don't nobody give the fattest of fucks that he can't carry your purse for you that he can't do this for you that he can't do that for you he is sick like i i, I just can't under, i can't fathom why she, how she can make everything solely about herself like that just baffles me to no avail like your husband is sick but here you are talking about this me 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 she's selfish as fuck is what she is and she's she's self-centered and self she's selfish self-centered self-absorbed like all of the empty anything that you can think of with self in it that is what nini is and i just got so fucking irritated with her but then he told her you know he um he's thinking about now he wants to do either radiation or chemo so he just wants to go in to talk to the doctor and get educated about radiation and chemo i feel bad for greg you know and i feel bad for him that he has to be stuck with a a a, a, tr a person like her like did you not forget your wedding vows that you made you know she said for richer and richer and in sickness is sickness and in health he is sick right now and not in good health you need to be there for him say so, you know and like i said last week or i, I know i've said this multiple times she needs to find someone that she can talk to to make her you know just to put her frustrations out there it's okay to feel the way you feel but at the same time he is the one that's sick not you stop making everything about yourself like I, I get irritated with her when she does that shit to him that man is sick that man is the one that is you know looking at death in the face because cancer is a i mean it can, it's not a death sentence but it can be if not treated properly if not caught on time if, if you don't do the preventive measures to you know tackle it like what the fuck that shit just got on my nerves with her Okay, so I'm going to save candy for last, so I'm talking about Portia next. So we see Portia, she and Dennis, they are doing a walkthrough of where they're going to have the gender reveal party. It's a place where she did the photo shoot for, um, you know, her Go Naked lingerie line a few years ago. And, you know, the theme of the, um, she didn't want to do a traditional, gen well, gender reveal just became popular within the last few years. So I'm not going to say a traditional gender reveal, but she doesn't want to do, you know, the, the, the blue balloons, the pink balloon the yellow for neutral she doesn't want to do any of that stuff she wants to have it actually as a party and it's a circus theme party i'm like that's interesting but okay it's portia speaking of which congratulations to portia she and dennis just had their baby and her name is her name is pilar i can't pronounce what her last name her middle name is i think it's j-h-n-e-a and so it's pilar uh, mckinley Portia just posted it on her IG and I just saw it before I came on camera. But congratulations to Portia and Dennis. They had her baby PJ or Pilar on Friday of this past week. This past week. So again, congratulations to those two. Um, so, you know, she talks about, they talk about, well, how do you want us to, you know, reveal what the gender is? And, you know, they were talking about some ideas. And, you know, Dennis believes that it's a, a boy because he thinks he saw, a, you know, a, the penis. And she's like, I don't think you saw a penis, but whatever. Excuse me, y'all. And, oh shit, excuse me. Um, so then, you know, Dennis asks her, like, what's next? So she says, well, you know, next, he says, the baby shower, then the wedding. But then they also need to finalize their prenup. And they also need to figure out where they're going to live. So Dennis, he wants to live in the city. But Portia wants to stay in her house out there in Duluth. Um... Oh God, Duluth is kind of far. Who Duluth is far from the city of Atlanta? Because I had a friend. I, I went to Atlanta to, uh, in two thousand and eleven. I think I was twenty-two. I think on my twenty-second birthday. I believe it was my twenty. I know it was my twenty-second birthday, but I think that was two thousand eleven. Yeah, it was twenty. It was twenty eleven because I'm a year. My I'm, my age is not the same as the year. Cause I'll be, cause this is 2019 and I'm going to be 30 this year. So yeah, I was 22 in 2011. So I went to Atlanta for my birthday. God, I mean, I, Ooh, I wonder where is the Ricky Smiley? Where's his station at? Like, 
because if I don't know where Porsche that station is, and, and like I said, we know Porsche lives in Duluth. <laughs> Funny story though about that when I went to Atlanta. Oh my God, I rode with the Marta because I, again I was 22 years old, so I could not rent a car if I unless I had it. You know, I couldn't rent a car without you know um, a card and a driver's license. My driver's license and a card in my name. My mom and I tried to go back and forth with that, but we couldn't do it, so I had to ride the Marta, which I actually had a good. Time. I actually enjoyed that. But it was so funny on the Marta. Um, I think we was by, um, you know, Midtown, the Midtown area. Um, <laughs> there was a couple on there, and the dude he was about to get off, and his boyfriend was like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, I don't know nobody over here. Who you know over here?" It was like a soap opera on that train. I was like, "What the hell?" But it was hilarious as fuck to me. I died laughing. But uh, yeah. So you know, Portia wants to live in a house in Duluth, which I think that's. I mean, it's a big enough house. And, you know, I mean, I guess I get where Dennis is coming from with a, a commute from Duluth to Atlanta. I mean, but Portia did make, make some valid points that if they were to move to the city, they're going to get something that's much smaller than what she lives in now. And it's going to cost more. So, you know, I definitely get that. Um, I need to figure out what I want to do if I want to still live in Dallas. I, I mean, I love Dallas. But, I, you know, I, I do want to go back to grad school and I, I always want to go to Clark, Atlanta. Even as an undergrad, I want to go to Clark. So I want to go for my master's to go to Clark. But I'm trying to debate on what I want to do. If I want to, God, that would be a horrible fucking commute to fly from Dallas to Atlanta. But I love Texas. Texas is my home. I love Texas and I love Atlanta too. So I don't really know what the hell I'm going to do when it comes to going to school out there we'll figure it out when that time we'll figure that out i got i'm gonna try i'm trying to go back to school in the fall so i got some i got some time to figure that shit out pray for me pray for me pray for me all right so then we see eva eva is meeting up with candy and you know she and can't she's just coming back from her honeymoon they went to greece you know they did some sightseeing and they sight saw each other i like I, I actually do like eva and um you know her husband i actually kind of like eva and i actually would like for eva to come back next season I, she didn't give us enough this season but you know for what she did give us it was pretty cool so i would be interested in seeing eva come back for season 12 the only person for season 12 that I don't want to see is Nene. That's the only person I don't care to see. I'm cool with Kenya coming back. I'm cool. No, I'm not going to say that. Yeah, I guess I would. I'd be I, I'd be interested to see Phaedra come back. I really would be. But as far as Nene goes, like, she can go for real. Like, this season has painted her in such a horrible light. But I am talking about Eva. So, and I'm talking, yeah, I'm talking about Eva. Did I say that she met up with Candy? I think I did. Um, yeah, that, so they're having dinner or lunch, whichever one. And, you know, um, you know, Eva told her she just got back from her honeymoon. But then she's talking about she's got to deal with all the drama that happened at her, at her wedding where one of her bridesmaids, shout out to Nini on that one, um, her bridesmaid choked out her wedding planner. I'm like, well, God damn. And, you know, um, she's talking about her and her friend Shanita. They fell out with one another. So I'm like, okay, so Shanita must have been the one that called Marlo to, you know, quote unquote, give Marlo the tea on Eva. Like, first of all, Eva, Shanita was not a friend of yours. If the bitch can freely go and tell somebody else your business once you two fall out with one another, that was not a friend. Like, I've fallen out with my friends before and never once have we ever gone behind each other's backs and told each other's business to other people. Because, again, we're friends. And, you know, just because we have a tip doesn't mean we won't get back to being friends. And that's why I never do that with my friends. Even if even if we don't ever go back to being friends again, I'm never going to tell your business because you and I were once friends and I'm still going to respect our friendship or I'm not. Well, I'm going to respect the friendship that we once had to never discuss anything about you to anybody else, because that's just not who I am. That's not how I operate, you know. And like I said, we could also at some point we could mend you know mend the fences and become friends again and then if you found out that i talk shit about you then you'd be like well damn you talk shit about me behind my back and we fell out like what kind of friend is that so i would never do no shit like that and eva like i said shanita is not a friend of yours if that's what she can do to you that is not a friend 
whatsoever. Um, and then you know she's talking about she had some drama with her other bridesmaids at the you know at the bridal shower or something like that. I'm like, but well, damn, none of them hoes was your friend. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? And then you know she's talking about how she's gonna have to move out of her um home in two days and move to another house. But then I said, she, I think she said she was fixing up another house. So I I was with Candy like. That sounded hella confusing, but you know, if but even they explained it, it a little bit about it has to do with Kevin. I'm like, okay, um, yeah, and the return order she has on him, I'm like, okay, Eva, we know he's crazy, so I'm not gonna knock that at all. I'm just gonna say it is what it is and move on. All right, so then we move over to Candy. Sorry, y'all, I'm reading tweets that people either quote tweeting me or like my tweets on my uh twitter so if you guys see me looking that's if you guys ever notice me looking in my videos that's what i'm doing i shoot on my phone until i buy me a um a dslr camera and get my laptop fixed so i can do editing on my computer so if you guys ever notice that me be looking at if i'm looking at stuff on my i'm looking at my phone sometimes i get text messages from my friends sometimes i get Somebody actually called me one day in the middle of me doing a fucking video. And I'm like, you motherfucker. But uh, moving on. So we see Candy. She's with her mama. She's with Ace, Todd, Riley, and uh, Kayla. And, you know, they're talking about a lot of stuff. She tells them that she, um, she tells us she got the paperwork to open up OLG2. And um, little Ace, he's really, he is so cute. He was trying to give Riley and some pizza and you know, Riley and Candy, they're not eating pizza for what reason, I don't know. But um, we're gonna move on from that. So then, you know, um, Candy's telling Mama Joyce that she and Todd, they met with, you know, the um, surrogate that Dr. Jackie knew and they decided that they're gonna go through the process of surrogacy. So then Riley asked Mama Joyce, how does she feel about it? And Mama Joyce is like, you know, um, I can't tell them what to do, you know, that's their decision. And Ryder's like, well, I don't think that they should do it because, you know, they have Ace and they're not even doing any, they're not even present in his life, which, I mean, I get where Riley is coming from. You know, you haven't, you have kids, but you're not as present in their lives. So, I mean, hmm, I don't know how I feel about that because, I mean, when I was a kid, my mom worked two jobs. Sometimes she no, she had yeah she always had at one point because she was um she did home health care, so she did she worked two jobs sometimes and you know there were times that I wouldn't see my mom until late at night you know when she got off from her last from her job at nine o'clock at night and you know I would be in school in the day and she would be at home during the day and then when I got out of school I would go to my grandmother's house she was she was. Sometimes she would pick me up from school to go to my grandmother's house. There was this, there was a few occasions where she called a cab to pick me and my cousins up from school to take us to our grandma, my grandmother's house. Luckily enough, my grandma didn't live that far from my school. And, you know, sometimes my aunt would pick me up from school and take me to her house. So, you know, I, I mean, I get where Riley's coming from, but, you know, my mom always made time for me. If, you know, if we didn't, uh, even before I went to bed at night, you know, I'd take my bath and she would come in my room. We would talk and we would have conversations. We would have, we would, we would talk about my day in school. And, you know, we would, sometimes I would, she, sometimes I would ask her if I could sleep with her and she'd be like, uh, no, Jerome, you sleep so rough. You're always kicking me. I'm like, but I just want to sleep with you. No, sleep in your bed. I'm like, okay. So I, I, like I said, I get where Riley's coming from, but at the same time, Candy and Todd are working hard to make a a good life for them so you know and i agree and i'm a, i can't even believe i'm saying this but i definitely agree with mama joyce like you know it's their decision to do whatever they want to do and then mama joyce did say you know um she wishes that she had another child because she since she's lost her son it's just candy that she has now so you know i definitely get where she's coming from and i um I completely completely understand where Ty is coming from because Todd losing his mom and he, him being his mom's only child, you know, the things that he has to go through with losing his mother, like no one understands what it's like to be an only child and not have anybody to completely, you know, support you in your time of grief. Now, I'm not, a, I'm a, now technically I'm not an only child, 
by my mom but and technically my mom was my um maternal aunt so by her i was her only child but by my biological mother i have three brothers and i have a sister my dad i don't know anything about him because my birth mother won't tell me about my dad so you know by my so technically i am an only child because i was the only child that my mom had and no one else knows the struggle of what i go through every day of not have my mother here in this world with me but you know so i definitely understood where Ty was coming from but you know i think when it comes to candy and Ty, they don't they i mean they're still they still are part of ace's life it's not like they're completely you know um you know void of his life they're just working to make you know things better for the kids than what it was for them when they were growing up so you know you know, I, I, I see both sides of the, of, the, of the coin and I understand where Ryan's coming from, but I understand where Todd and Candy coming from. So, you know, pretty soon they have a new baby girl. I don't know if the surrogate is pregnant or not. I guess we'll find it at the reunion. All right. So next we have the OLG2 opening. I know the next time I go to Atlanta, I got to go to OLG and just check out the food. Um... So we see all the girls there. We see Tanya there. We see Eva. We see Cynthia. We see who else did we see? We saw Rashida there. Oh God, Rashida, Rashida and Kirk. Love and Hip Hop Atlanta comes on tomorrow night. It's three hours of Love and Hip Hop again. Oh God, pray for us YouTubers who review these shows, cause we in for like. I know y'all can see a lot of us last week. Our energy was drained. Oh, God. But it's still fun at the same time. But that much love and hip hop in one night, too much. Um, So we see Tanya. She asked um, Eva to have a conversation with her. And Eva's like, is this a private conversation? She says, yes. So she pulls Eva to the side. And she and Eva have the conversation. And she's telling Eva, you know, uh, Marlo called one of your bridesmaids on the phone. And, she, you know, the bridesmaid, she was talking about how, you know, your home is not in your name. And Eva's like, well, I never said that the home was in my name. So, okay. And then she's like, well, she said you also have, you have bad credit. She's like, uh, was it credit card? Did she call credit karma? Like, and the whole thing about the credit thing, like, that's nothing to, that ain't shit. Like, there's a lot of people out here with fucked up ass credit. Like, hell, my credit ain't as good as it used to be. So, what the fuck does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Like, Marlo, no one knows what you do for a living. So, you might have you might have shitty credit, but your sugar daddy might have great credit. So, shut up. <laughs> Please shut up. So, we find out that Porsche did not show up because I don't know why Porsche didn't show up. I guess Porsche is still leery of the whole Candy COVID click. I would be too. But we do know that Porsche and Candy are in a good spot with one another. Actually, all the girls are in a good spot with one another, with the exception of Nene. Um, but Porsche did send her some flowers. So then we see Nene and um, Marlo show up. But before Nene and Marlo showed up, you know, uh, Eva got up and left and she was done with it. So then when Nene shows up, she um, Tanya tells her that, you know, she told Eva what happened at Eve, at Marlo's house and e and immediately Nene got upset like that was we all agreed that I was the one that was going to tell her well if he was a good enough friend you would have called her that same night and said you know what girl I was over at Marlo's house and um you know Marlo was telling us this and this and this about you and then she got one of your bridesmaids well your bride made up and the girl was just telling us all this and this and this and that about you that's what a real friend would do but Nene's not a real friend to anybody like, fuck out of here. And I, you know, I got upset with Marlo because Marlo's talking about she's a lesbian and, you know, she has girlfriends in L.A. Okay, if she does, what's, what's, the, what's the big fucking deal? You got sugar daddies all over Atlanta. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody. Literally, nobody's talking about that. Um, so, you know, uh, Nene, she goes outside to call Eva and Eva's like, you know what? I don't want to have a conversation with those girls, but I will with you because I respect you. I'm like, well, you shouldn't respect her too much because she was sitting there kicking with Marlo about it. But, you know, whatever. And, um, you know, she's like, I'll have a conversation with you without the cameras. So then we see, um, Nene, she's talking to Cynthia, not Cynthia. I was about to say Mike and Cynthia, but it's Eva and, and Eva and Mike. 
and you know she is mic'd up with them and you know she's just trying to get Eva to come back in but then we see Eva she does come back in there and she starts explaining her situation to the girls and Marla's like she's lying and I'm like how the fuck you know she's lying like you lie you lie about how you get your money the fuck like that shit just irritated me I am so ready for this shit to be over with next week is the finale and Kenya Moore shows up and I tweeted this like I never thought that I would say that I am happy to see Kenya because Kenya has gotten on my nerves for the last how many years was Kenya on Housewives of Atlanta five years for five years Kenya got on my fucking nerves but I'm actually kind of excited to see Kenya and Kenya is actually in a good spot with all of the girls with the exception of Nene she you know Portia went to her baby shower and um she went to Portia's baby shower and you know um she tweeted last I don't know if she no she didn't tweet Portia I follow Portia on IG so I saw in Portia's comments where uh Kenya was commenting and she was like you know tell baby PJ to come on because you know her baby is ready to have a play date and I'm like I said I'm so happy to see all those girls in a good spot with one another it's just King Nene that's not in a good spot with anybody but you guys that was Real Housewives of Atlanta like the video leave your comments subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys later for Marriage to Medicine Los Angeles oh before I even get off this camera I want to talk about the Real Housewives of Potomac the trailer came out this past week I'm not going to even talk about the trailer too deeply the only thing that frustrated me the most it was two things one seeing Katie is back and number two seeing that Robin and Juan are on the same fucking bullshit this is season four and we are still talking about this motherfucking relationship between Robin and Juan I'm gonna have to woosah 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 with that bullshit but see you guys later